Good evening, and welcome to Newtown Township Board of Supervisors meeting for March 8th, 2023. It's our regular bi-monthly meeting, and tonight we have the special circumstance of having the heat not working. So I uh, hope everybody brought an extra jacket or cover up, some, something to keep them warm. We'll, we hope to keep things moving this evening, so we don't have to be too cold. Uh, as is customary, we have a moment of silence. Uh, please join us uh, with a moment of silence this evening. Thank you. Please join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Lewis, are there any changes to the agenda this evening? No changes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, no special actions. That brings us to our first round of <clears throat> first round of public comment. If we have anybody who would like to make a comment, come forward to the podium and state your name. And okay, seeing none at the moment, we'll just keep moving along. Um, that brings us to minor approvals, and we have a memorial bench request for Robert Ridge Park. Um, and I believe Megan is going to do our, our park, and rec park and Recreation. Director Megan is going to do the presentation, do the honors. So welcome. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Nice to see you all. Um, this is our second request in a couple years. As I mentioned a couple minutes ago, we're trying to make it uniform throughout the park system. So when someone approaches us for memorial bench, um, we already have a bench picked out. So it matches the majority of benches moving forward. And then there's a certain plaque size that they have to get. Um, residents will uh, pay for this entire project. Um, the only thing that the township is responsible for is um, the concrete pad and also the labor. So um, in total, it costs about $2,000 for a resident to get a memorial bench. Uh, this particular family just wants to say thank you to their parents who've been in Newtown for over 40 years. And so they had picked Roberts Ridge and a location uh, that faces their house. And uh, when these requests come in, I also work with um, public works director. So we make sure that it doesn't um, you know, cause any issues with grass cutting, things like that. It's not going to be in the middle of somewhere where, you know, folks can't access it. So uh, with your approval, um, then we wait upon the weather to um, put the concrete pad in, let it cure, um, install it. And then sometimes the families have a little, um, you know, celebration that is there and that's it. There's no maintenance with it, uh, again, except grass cutting around the edge. And um, if you look on the map, they picked along the path of Roberts Ridge, closest to the parking lot, uh, again, facing um, away from Dolington and Frost. So um, again, the bench and plaque are already paid for. That's coming from them. And our cost is the labor and the concrete. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> Do we have any questions? Do we, uh, we're looking to have a motion and an approval for this. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the memorial, memorial bench request? I'll make the motion. Thank you. I'll, sir, I'll second. Thank you, Phil. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Now, do we have any further discussion? Didn't have any discussion before. Any further discussion? Any, any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of um, approving the bench, memorial bench request at Roberts Ridge Park, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. Good evening. Thank if anybody else from the audience wants a bench, come email me. There you go. We got a standard process. Okay, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. I see Mrs. Donaldson here this evening. Mary Donaldson, Secretary for the Planning Commission. We met last night with Bucks County 
uh, Planning Commission members Lisa Wolf and Jeremy Staff to review their work on an update for our overlay district in the LIOLI -L -I zoning district. We've been working on it for a while, expanding uses, that sort of thing. And we discussed mostly adding the use of a mixed use residential, which would be buildings with apartments above and commercial uses below. And some of the commercial uses that would be considered aren't in the, that district right now. So that's what we've been thinking about. And the overlay would consist of properties which connect to the main roads of the commons, Friends Lane, Pheasant Run, and Penn's Trail. We had a number of concerns about the exact limits of the overlay and whether we would want to extend the district to the entire commons, but have decided to leave it as the overlay to protect neighboring residential areas from the relaxed zoning standards such an increased residential density building and building height. After our recent presentation for a large multi-unit apartment building on Lower Silver Lake Road, we had some concerns about Newtown being protected from validity challenges, as we do not provide for any apartment buildings. We have asked that in addition to the mixed-use buildings, the BCPC also consider a new apartment building. We are open to the concept of providing this type of housing, but we'll want to be careful to still preserve the commons as a place for businesses. We discussed ideas such as limiting the number of units per building or of the entire overlay or for the entire overlay district. What I mean by that is no more than X number of apartments in the entire business commons. They will return on April 18th to fill us in on a, a revised ordinance. We also unanimously voted to recommend that the supervisors approve the updated comprehensive plan for the jointure. We have written a cover letter explaining the change we would like to section five, livable communities, and this isn't in your report because I just spoke to them this afternoon, but they have that sheet with the corrections and they will include them. And we have also voted unanimously to approve the attached, which I put in your packets, addenda, which address new towns' responses and goals for the plan once adopted. That would only impact new town. Any questions? Any questions for Ms. Donaldson? I, I have a question. I don't, I don't know if uh, I don't know, Mary, if you can answer this, and, or, or maybe our solicitor. But in, in regards to the uh, revision to the. LOI, OLI uh, district, how long would this process take? When would this, well, how quickly I'm, could it go into effect? I'm pretty sure Dave will back me up. It, it will be eternal. A long time. Mr. Calabro knows better than anyone about how long it takes to get something through the jointure, but this would require an ordinance okay. that would have to be reviewed by the planning commissions County has 30 days to review it. Then you've got to schedule a hearing for all three municipalities. Now, it's got to go to the Joint Zoning Council. It has to be approved for sending to the municipalities to advertise. You know the drill. So right. it's not going to be any time uh, soon. Our Planning Commission hasn't even agreed on an updated ordinance. They're only so far working on descriptions of the new uses. They haven't drafted an entire ordinance yet. So I would think it will be a while. Mary, would the ordinance only deal with the LI, OLI, which means that yes. Upper Makefield and Wrightstown have they none of that have zoning? They don't have that zoning district. Okay, so, so this is really a Newtown-centric Newtown project. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Sounds like we'll be getting the comprehensive plan on our Board that of Supervisors should happen agenda. sooner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm hopeful in the next, uh, within the next couple of meetings. My we'll understanding be. is, and I think Jerry knows, the other municipalities also had zero changes. So it should just be easy. Okay. Okay. Thank Good you very night, much. Everybody. Going you home too. where it's warm. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. Uh, brings us to board member reports, and I'll try to keep mine short. 
uh, I went to a number of meetings in the last couple of weeks. One was, uh, one was a hearing uh, on the Sterling Act, and it's something that um, it, seeks, it seeks to have the um, Philadelphia wage tax come back to people who live in the outlying counties. Uh, and it would be depending on, on our wage tax, uh, depending on our EIT rate, it would be 0.5 or 1 percent of the Philadelphia wage tax that would come back to a suburban community. Uh, it's been been going since, it's an, an issue that's been on the table off and on since 1932. So it may happen, it may not. Uh, just wanted to report that. Um, also went to a Martin Luther King Dream Builders Award annuals, second annual uh, award ceremony at the Bucks County Commission, Bucks County Community College in February 23rd. So that was <clears throat> that was a nice event. Uh, lastly, uh, we had a fire services commission, and uh, out of that, the fire the fire chief for Newtown Township and the NFA president are have have been putting together a, a presentation to talk about fire services in the borough and the township. And at some point in the near future, next couple of months at a meeting, or maybe a work session, depending on how we want to do it, uh, they would like to do a presentation on the state of uh, fire services in Newtown. Um, <clears throat> also, um, let me see, there was one other piece that I wanted to do that. We acknowledged the addition of our deputy chief, who was uh, ceremonially, ceremoniously uh, um, sworn in last, last meeting. <clears throat> um, the deputy chief, uh, with, the fact of, with the fact of hiring that new chief, deputy chief, that new service, the monthly, the monthly contribution that the borough gives to the township or, or is obligated to give to the township per agreement, that should go up, <clears throat> that number should go up. Uh, so I've been working with the manager to calculate what that amount is. Um, that's all I have. I would comment that uh, Mr. Mack is not here this evening. He had a medical procedure earlier in the week and he is unavailable to attend this evening. Uh, Ms. Snyder. I'd like to announce that the Environmental Advisory Committee will have a special April 3rd meeting here at the Township Building at 7 o'clock with Ferran Savitz of Penn Environment. We are inviting all businesses in the Township to educate owners and managers about single-use plastics. There will be a question and answer session where all members of the Environmental Advisory Committee will answer all questions and a sample ordinance will be distributed to them. We hope to get all of the businesses on board with this and it has been greeted with great enthusiasm and positivity by our township. We've done extensive research for almost two years to take the temperature of the township on this matter. The ordinance has been passed in cities, townships and boroughs throughout the state and we hope to follow in their footsteps for the future of Newtown. Uh, the other issue I'd like to talk about is I also attended the Fire Services uh, Commission meeting. And I'd like to say that effective March 5th, Northampton Township Fire Department has expanded career firefighter coverage to 24-7, 365 days a year. Previously, coverage has been 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. due to lack of volunteers. Newtown Township must find a way to also get this done in the near future. All our homes, businesses need to, prote to be protected as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. Mr. Calabro, you have anything? Uh, the only thing I have uh, tonight, Mr. Chair, is I like to say uh, congratulations to all the women. I believe today is the International Women's uh, Day, if, if I'm 
correct here, and I would just if, like to... If I remember from Morning Joe this morning, yes, <laughs> yes International Women's Day. Morning Joe and Mika are somewhere in the world uh, at some conference, but I'd just like to say uh, I give all the uh, women accolades that are out there, and um, happy International Women's Day. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Calabro. Mr. Davis. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Okay. No recreation to port, report tonight? Okay. All right, that brings us to public hearings. I believe our conditional use is listed first, and I'll toss it to Mr. Sander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a conditional use hearing on the application of Ardana food and drink for a conditional use to operate uses E5 and E6, an eating place, an eating place drive-in in the PC Plan Commercial District at 2948 South Eagle Road, Building 7, Unit 35. I will, uh, pre um, uh, before we start, uh, I will mark uh, Board Exhibit 1 as the application, Board Exhibit 2 as the proof of publication of notice of tonight's hearing. Board Exhibit 3 as the proof of posting of the property uh, with notice of tonight's hearing. And Board Exhibit 4 will be the CKS uh, Engineer's Review Letter dated February 13th, 2023. Uh, Mr. Blackburn is here uh, representing the applicant. Mr. Blackburn. Good evening. Joe Blackburn from Whistler Pearlstein here on behalf of the applicant, Ardana Newtown, LLC with respect to its application concerning the approximately 6,700 square foot vacant tenant space located, uh, as Mr. Sander previewed, at 2948 South Eagle Road. As I'm sure members of the board are well aware, that site is uh, currently vacant, but was the former site of the Solstice Restaurant, a similarly um, situated E5 and E6 eating place use. Um, application tonight is really, in essence, to um, pick up the ball and run uh, from where Solstice left off from, a, from an operational standpoint, I would say. Um, we can hear uh, briefly about the differences from uh, the offerings from um, the proprietor, Mr. Uh, Mike Christou, who is joining me tonight. But um, we are in receipt of the um, CKS review letter. Um, I would note that... <clears throat> In large respect, the operational components for the uh, Ardana restaurant uh, mirror or are in fact less intense than those which uh, existed with respect to Solstice, um, particularly uh, with respect to seating, which I'm sure is the most uh, significant in everyone's mind. It is, in fact, not by a great deal, but one fewer seats than that which was for Solstice. Uh, the interior and exterior uh, breakdown of those being substantially similar to those that was for Solstice as well. Uh, hours of operation, employee counts, deliveries are all, in fact, less than those which were previously approved for Solstice, and those are all reflected in the CKS review letter, so I won't um, go through those in particular. Um, I would note that this would be the second Ardana restaurant, um, a family operation, um, as I indicated, uh, Mr. Christou and his family uh, have uh, six restaurants. Their other Ardana restaurant is presently operating in the um, Valley Square Shopping Center in Warrington. Um, Mr. Christou is a Council Rock graduate, so this is a bit of a homecoming for him and his family. Um, and I am happy to make either myself or um, Mr. Christou available for any questions that the board may have. Any, qu <clears throat> any questions from the board? I have two. Uh, and there really are 90 seats out, outside. Uh, there are proposed to be 90. Under the current proposal, there were 92 proposed uh, or mm. approved as a part of the solstice. So two fewer than were previously uh, contemplated. Yeah. I mean, everyone saw the globes, right, the igloos, and thought yes. that was the outdoor seating. But that was obviously a COVID uh, uh, involvement. Um, that was, there was 92 seats proposed and approved for solstice in the outdoor area, yes. Mm. I, I had to count them. I was looking at the plan. It was okay, but I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Uh, and the other, the other, this may not be something that the restaurant itself can do, but in terms of parking, uh, with the with the, the planning commission asked, made this point last night, that they've seen <coughs> more and more employees parking in the in the regular parking lot there. Could we get a commitment from? the restaurant and, and or maybe Bricksmore to encourage uh, employees to park in a remote location. Yeah, that's been, um, if not enforced to the extent necessary, certainly the, the um, intent of both Bricksmore and individual uh, businesses there in, in the commons as well, uh, or excuse me, in the shopping center as well. Um, 
you know, it is uh, in the restaurant's best interest to not have its employees taking up the prime spots uh, next to its own restaurants. So uh, I think it's fair to say that that would be something that they would um, best self-regulate. Um, you've seen the uh, no employee parking. I'm candidly not sure who put that sign up there uh, at the in front of Chopped, but um, that is something that is ongoing. Um, but each of the individual um, tenant users are responsible for monitoring that, and they're, I think, probably the ones best served um, by doing so. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Mr. Blackburn, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, good. Good. Uh, just some of the normal questions when, when we get these uh, applications. Uh, in regards to, as just to clarify, eating place E5, and everybody hears about the drive-in, but not necessarily. It's not a drive-in. It's just in there as precautionary measures. That's correct. Yeah, no drive-in uh, contemplated. Just that's to address the takeout possibility gotcha. of the E6. Uh, I also was curious about the 90 seasonal seats. Um, how many tables would the 159 indoor uh, seats <coughs> encompass? How many tables would the Yeah, I just like to break things down in tables because 90 seasonal seats outside is more than half of what's inside. Um, you have a thriving business outside. In, in, in itself, there's some restaurants that we have in the township that don't even have 90 seats mm -hmm. on the interior. And, and this is, like you said, where the igloos were. This is what we're talking about? Correct, yeah, the same area. It's not being expanded, not being, okay. yeah. And there were ni 90 seats would fit there? 92 would fit there. Okay, which uh, tables of four would be, uh, I don't know, I'm going to calculate off the top of my head. Well, there's, uh, I think we submitted a floor plan with the application, and I'm just, you know, doing some rough calcs. There's four tops. Um, there's, in fact, an eight top, and there's some two tops. So it um, looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, two tops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, four tops, and an eight top and a six top. So for anybody keeping okay. track, hopefully that adds up to 90. Um, okay. Uh, I believe you. I'm not going to dispute that. But it, again, it just, I mean. It seems like that's, a, that's an awful lot of um, <clears throat> what you call seasonal seats. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and those would not be, I think we've talked about it in the context of Solstice and others, the, the, certainly the intent and expectation is not that, oh, well, in summer you'll have 160 people inside and another 90 outside. It's, you know, in the summer you will have the majority of the outdoor seating being used with some maybe overflow inside, not 250 patrons. Can it accommodate it? Yes. Is that the intention? No. Candidly, I don't know that the kitchen could probably... Um, would be screaming at that scenario, but and then obviously in the off season we're we're at 106 or 160 total because we're not going to be using the outdoor at all. Okay. Um, I think that's probably the fair assumption is that regardless of the season, 160 is probably where you're going to land on a busy Friday or Saturday night, okay. whether that's 90 outside and 50 inside or all 160 inside. Hey, I, I hope it's crowded every night. I, 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 so do we. I, I wish you that. I'm just making sure that it's not spillover crowded, in, in other words. Um, and, and I guess when Mr. Sander goes into the conditions, the old, the good old condition about any kind of outside music is not Certainly. going to be yeah. in there. Okay. Um, Haven't heard that in a while, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this doesn't affect the, uh, the ratio of uh, restaurants to space. It's still at the below the 45? Yeah, so the last time we were here for a new restaurant was Chopped, uh, and at that time the, the additional square footage for that brought us up to just a tick over 31%. Uh, so this is obviously not increasing that, and I would in fact add that since that time we've lost both Friends and Dolce, so we're, we're probably, and then those were some significant square footages, so we're probably significantly below that 31% uh, that we were at at the time of Chopped. But that, that space is, is calculated in, even though they're not there, that space is still calculated in the In the 31, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just one thing, I guess, for the, uh, for the owners and the operators that maybe to take into consideration is I don't know if you wanted to make your hours of operation uniform. And the reason I always ask this is just in case you want to make any kind of change to the hours, you'd have to come back. Mm -hmm. If you want to extend the hours, and make them longer, now's the time to do it. No, doesn't mean you have to 
live by those hours, but at least you have them incorporated so you don't have to come back and fill out another application. So I'm mean, just going to throw that out there. Yeah, I mean, I've candidly taken to um, getting their hours and then grossing them up a little bit myself. So this reflects those uh, expanded hours already. Okay. So I think we're good with what's reflected in the CKS. But, but thank you for that, okay. that consideration. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clabro. Anyone else? It's I nice. guess you'll be prepared to uh, send every a lot of parking over to the other side where all the there's a lot of empty businesses. That really worries me. The amount of of, of tables you're going to have and the lack of parking. Um, so I I know you're going to be faced with that. It's a tough situation there. Uh, have a plan. <laughs> have a plan. Oh, certainly. Is there any valet parking? Uh, if, yeah, if we'll have to have you sworn. Uh, yeah, let's have uh, the yeah. witness sworn, please. And just. Is it spelled right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Michael M I C H A E L, Christus C H R I S T O U. And the question was whether you thought about valet at all. Yeah, and I can kind of touch on um, the patio also, kind of at the same time. Valet is actually being taken care of by Bricksmore, the operator of the shopping center, and that's going to happen before we open. Um, it's already in the works from what I understand. Uh, I guess they piloted it um, when Solstice was still open. Um, and to the employee parking thing, um, from what I've heard from other tenants right there in that small shop, part of the shopping center where we are, Employees have started parking in that parking lot again after Solstice closed. Um, so I did talk to Briggs. I don't want to go around to those businesses and like ask them to change that, but I think it is being addressed also. And my, my employees will certainly be um, parking elsewhere. Um, as far as the patio is concerned, I, I would want to be full every night as well. Um, but seasonally, we take a big dip in the nicer part of the year. Um, so like he said, when it's patio season, a lot of times the patio might be full, but we won't be at capacity inside. Um, our busiest season is in the cold weather, so. While we got you at the microphone, why don't you explain your scope of business? Tell yeah, us sure. The concept. Yeah, um, he touched on it a little bit. Um, Family-owned uh, Mediterranean restaurant. We go kind of cover the full Mediterranean. My family's from Cyprus, so pretty Greek-heavy. Um, a lot of Italian food, but um, grew up in Newtown, so I'm excited to come back, and I'm excited to take that space with you know a family-owned concept. I think if we weren't to do it, it probably would have been a bigger company. Um, but we'll be lunch and dinner. Um, the hours aren't here; are a little bit inflated. We'll be opening a little bit later during the week, closing a little bit earlier during the week. Um, but yeah, kind of comfortable environment, and um, hopefully the type of place that everybody feels like they can go to. Is it the same? Uh concept food menu kind of yep. feel as the Warrington uh, yeah if anybody's, location, if anybody's been there yeah if anybody's been there we're opening with the exact same menu I think I mean we're open to kind of um, detouring from that depending upon what people are looking for here as opposed to Warrington but same feel same concept um, uh, same menu so yeah thank you thank you both anyone else Mr. Sander, if we were so inclined. To ask for public comment. Oh, okay. You can ask for public comment now. Is there any public comment on seeing none? Now I can ask. I, I am prepared to frame a motion for the board. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if the board's of a mind, it would be a motion to grant the application of Ardana Food and Drink LLC for a conditional use for uses E5 and E6, eating place and eating place drive-in uh, in the PC Plan Commercial District at 2948 South Eagle Road, Building 7, Unit 35. The uh, conditional use will be granted conditioned on the following. Uh, first, that the applicant comply with the provisions of the CKS Engineers Review Letter dated February 13th, 2023. Second, that the hours of operation will be Monday through Thursday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to midnight. Three, uh, there will be 10 employees for the first shift and 15 employees for the second shift. 
the average shift will have 10 to 15 employees with a maximum of 20 employees in any given shift. Four, uh, the use will not create any noxious, toxic, or corrosive fumes, smoke, odor, or dust. There will be no loud noises or vibration or objectionable heat glare or radiation beyond the property line, and the use will not create any other objectionable condition that will endanger public health and safety. Should this change or if complaints are received in this regard by the landlord or the township, the applicant will take immediate steps to correct the conditions responsible for these environmental impacts and notify the landlord and township in writing how it will mitigate such conditions in the future. Further, there will be no outdoor speakers, intercoms, nor music outside during uh, for this establishment for these uses. Uh, five, there will be no storage of hazardous, flammable, or explosive materials nor waste on the site. Should this condition change, the applicant must immediately notify the landlord and the township of this fact, including the nature of the materials present in the building and the safety plan for their maintenance within the building. Six, deliveries uh, will be at such times as not to interfere with the flow of traffic, parking, or access to the surrounding businesses. Seven, the, use, uh, the uses must comply with federal and state law addressing the Americans with Disabilities Act and all related regulations. Eight, a copy of the lease between this applicant and the landlord shall be provided to the township. Nine, all fees and costs due Newtown Township must be paid in full prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy by the township. 10, all signage desired by the applicant must conform to the standards established for the Newtown Shopping Center. Uh, that is the Bricksmoor Village at Newtown. Uh, and finally, uh, 11, the applicant's trash removal plan must conform to the trash removal plan adopted for the uh, Village at Newtown Shopping Center. Uh, Mr. Blackburn, you've heard those conditions. Are they acceptable to the applicant? Uh, they are. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it would be appropriate for the board to consider that motion if it wishes. Would someone like to make that motion? I make that motion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Snyder. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. And all those in favor of approving the conditional use hearing for Adana Food and Drink, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, next we have a PRD variance hearing for Brennan at 119 Colonial Drive. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you noted, uh, this is an application for a PRD variance uh, for Mike and Jennifer Brennan at 119 Colonial Drive. Um, this is uh, a request to increase the impervious surface uh, from the, the maximum permitted 25% uh, to a total of 31.45%. Uh, before we get started, I will mark as uh, board exhibits uh, B1 is the application, B2 is the zoning officer's memorandum dated January 19th, 2023. Uh, B3 is the Remington Vernick uh, review letter dated February 10th, 2023. Exhibit B4 is the proof of publication. Exhibit B5 is the proof of posting of the property. Exhibit B6 is the Knob Hill Homeowners Association letter dated January 11th, 2023. And Exhibit B7 are three emails from neighbors of the applicant uh, supporting the PRD variance request. Uh, looks like Mr. Brennan, uh, I believe, is here, and um, it's your show. Yeah. Um, so I'm Rob McCubbin from Anthony Sylvan Pools, so I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what's going on so um, I, can, I can get started with that. So, yeah, I met the Brennans probably back last May, almost a year ago, uh, to talk to them about building a pool. Um, and 
I was semi familiar with because we went through this last year in this development with the with the impervious surface and I kind of had a feeling that we were headed this direction with the impervious surface when we added our pool and pool patio. So so essentially where, where we sit is this property is 16,272.6 square feet. So the impervious max in, in this uh, R1 development is 25%. So uh, currently the property sits at 22.98%, uh, which, which is the, the dwelling the, the driveway, front walkway, there's a rear paver patio and a shed, uh, which make up that 22.98%. Uh, so we are looking to build a, I would say an average size uh, swimming pool, 640 square feet on the pool. Uh, the, the, the swimming pool patio, which is really just a walkway around most, uh, I would say three sides of the freeform pool. And then just an area for lounge chairs that that consists of 722 square feet and then our pool equipment pad at 21 square feet which does bring us to obviously over our impervious limit which brings us to 31.45 percent um so yes we're seeking a variance to for that additional uh additional 6.45 percent so we have proposed uh and and it's been reviewed um but we have proposed a stormwater management system uh, for the property. Uh, so the, the total increase of area is 1,383 square feet. We have proposed a stormwater system that is designed to capture 1,530 square feet. Um, we've done a soils test on the property. We've completed a full stormwater management report. Um, we had it reviewed once. There were some items that we needed to correct and I believe, uh, I believe the uh, Township Engineer has that as of today, has those revisions as of today uh, from that review letter. So I think most of those items on the review letter that we received are handled at this point with the exception of the very last few, which has to do with some of the processes that would take place if this was approved after, after this meeting. You ready for questions? Sure. Okay. Um, what, can you describe just very briefly what your uh, stormwater mitigation yes. is? Yes. So we did a soils test because mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, we, I guess in Newtown this year, we are, we, we, we are required to do the soils test now. Anytime stormwater management comes into play, this, the soils did not perform well. So the, so, so the uh, alternate method is an on-ground rain garden. Uh, system that's being built. Uh, there are some downspouts actually from the house that are being piped into into the system to help with uh, water collection, existing water collection, and to help try to, to mitigate any rainwater that leaves this property. But it is a rain garden in essence that, that we would be doing. <clears throat> and I'm going to reiterate some things that were already said. You've gotten a letter from the Homeowners Association. Correct. And you've got letters from neighbors. All the adjoining neighbors, yes. Yep. So I think, and, and you're ready to address those last couple of things when the Remington Vernick. Yeah, uh, I believe they, I, I know um, our, our engineer had, had spoke to uh, Leanna uh, on the phone a few weeks ago about some of those items. So I think this, we're gonna get a clean, clean letter based off of this last, last okay. review here. Obviously if we didn't, we'll do it again to make sure that it's, we have a clean letter before, okay. beforehand. Anyone else have questions? Just in regards to the uh, water runoff, uh, I, I guess uh, would this rain garden eliminate any runoff to the neighboring properties, Leanna? Or? You can comment. I mean, it, it should. The way that it's placed is at the rear of the property beyond the pool, so that's the, the design intention. Yep. Nothing additional like a French drain or anything would be needed to uh, capture water? Or? No, the way it's designed right now is to, is to capture all the, the impervious area. So. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And you um, feel confident that they can comply with the rest of the items? I do, yeah. We had spoken, uh, I had spoken with our engineer. We worked out a few things. They just resubmitted. I have the plans right here, so we'll review. And if there's anything that's still outstanding, we'll work that out. But I believe that they'll be able to comply. So we made a decision about, about this? Yes. Okay. 
That'll be a condition of approval if the board yeah. can, it wishes to approve it. We'll make that a condition. Any other comments from the board, from the public? Mr. Sander, if we were to make a motion, could you tell us what we would need to specify? Certainly, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, this would be a motion to grant the application of uh, Mike and Jennifer Brennan uh, for a PRD variance for property located at 119 Colonial Drive uh, to increase the impervious surface to a maximum of 31.45%, where 25% is the maximum permitted uh, in order to allow the installation of an in-ground swimming pool with associated improvements subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall comply with the provisions of the Remington and Vernick Engineers Review Letter dated February 10th, 2023. Two, the applicant shall follow the Newtown Township PRD Variance Application Guidelines for final submission and recording of the revised approved plan. And three, the applicant shall pay all fees and costs due and owing to Newtown Township before final approval is granted. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion uh, and a second. Did we, did we ask for a public comment, Mr. I think you did. Yeah, okay. we did. did. Just check. I, I learned from the first time. Um, do we want to add that condition that they follow any subsequent review letters? Well, I, I think they'll need an engineer sign off on their revised final plan before it even comes to the board to be signed. So the board won't sign it until the engineer signs okay. Good enough for me. Uh, any other public comment? Uh, seeing none, I'll call the, call the question. All those in favor of the approving the PRD variance for Brennan at nine, 119 Colonial Drive, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries for nothing. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll see the construction. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right, that brings us to reports of officials. And we have an engineer report. A couple items. Yep. Thank you. Um, the two items that we have tonight both pertain to the Lower Darlington Road Trail Project, so my thought was to sort of summarize them together and then make separate motions, if that's okay. Um, as the board's aware, um, there's been construction delays uh, as part of this project, um, resulting from utility providers taking their time, I'll say, <laughs> relocating the, um, the, the fiber optic center out there. As a result of that, um, there have been additional costs incurred to our contractor um, as a result of the delays. Um, in addition, there have been um, some utilities in areas that they were not supposed to be in, basically water company and things of that nature. Um, so these were field verified, unfortunately, after construction began. As a result of that, we've had to make a few modifications to the stormwater as a result of the trail. Um, so there's, you know, increased costs to that as well. So um, unfortunately, these are two... Um, Change order number four pertains to um, adjustments to the infiltration trenches for the trail for the stormwater management. And then change order number five pertains to the um, increased material and labor costs as a result of the delay. Um, so these are increasing the, the overall contract amount. Um, good news is we've spoken to DCNR because we have some grant funding with this project. Um, portions of this is able to be reimbursed um, so we're working through that process with them. So I think that's some good news here. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions um, on these change orders. Otherwise, we can make motions for, for each. <clears throat> any questions for our engineer? I, <clears throat> I, I know about utilities being located in a place you didn't expect them. When we had the sewer done on my street a couple of years ago, the, the cable especially was across the street in different ways that you just wouldn't have, wouldn't have anticipated. Um, okay, so I'll take these one at a time. Let's do change order number four. Uh, for the, uh, take a motion to 
Pay change order number four for the lower Dolington Road multi-use trail. So okay, motion and a second. Uh, have any, any further comments from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of approving this change order number four, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Going right, right along to change order number five, I'm going to anticipate there's no board com comment. Make, make the motion, Kyle. Second. And thank you, Ellen, for a second. Um, motion and a second. We have any further comment from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of approving change order number five for the Lower Dwellington Road multi-use trail, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. That's the Thank end you. of yep. your items. Yep. Thank you. Um, solicitor has no... Yes, for the first time in recorded history, there is nothing under the solicitor's report. Thank you. Okay. We'll move right along to the manager's report. Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General fund balances of this evening is $5,490,485. Plan expirations before the board with no action required. We have Chief Hearn to give his monthly chief report. Evening, Chief. Good evening. Good evening, board members. Good evening. February 2023 police report. We documented 1,844 calls for service, logged just under 24,000 patrol miles on our fleet. We had 18 arrests. Two were for robbery and assault. Two were for the theft, which included a gator and a home theft. Two terroristic threats, two frauds, two simple assaults, four narcotics possessions, one false report to law enforcement, and five DUIs. There were 12 cases referred to detectives and one crime scene processed, one in which included an aggravated assault, the theft of the all-terrain vehicle, and a couple package thefts. There were 40 traffic crashes, 160 citations issued, and 281 warnings issued. We conducted a targeted truck enforcement detail up in Wrightstown at Durham Road in Fox Hill, resulting in 15 truck inspections, two citations, two warnings, one vehicle was placed out of service and one vehicle was towed. Notable jobs. The job I mentioned last month about the robbery behind the Steak and Hoagie uh, property down by uh, Jake's. Um, we did affect a positive identification and affected two, two arrests as a result of that and they were taken into custody. Significant events, as everybody knows, on February 18th, uh, uh, Sergeant Chris Fitzgerald for the Temple University uh, Police Department was killed in line of duty. The new town township police department represented Newtown at his funeral detail. We also assisted Buckingham Police Department in the arrest and search and seizure of the property in Buckingham. Public service announcements. Drug take back is April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's a community event in Redstown on May 20th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're having our cops, cars, and coffee event on May 21st, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Veterans Park. Mail thefts are continuing from private mailboxes. Do not put your mail in your own private mailbox outside your residence. I would strongly still encourage you to drop it off inside the post office. And the annual report is posted on our website. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. I don't know if I heard this correctly. At the very beginning of your, your report, you said something about a gator. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a, uh, it's a quad type vehicle from the Council Rock School uh, District. Was taken from their uh, their back of their location. Uh, we tracked down the quad. We located it in Tyler State Park and effected an arrest. Got it. Got That's it. good because I was picturing somebody, you know, climbing on the back of an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no problem. No alligators in Newtown that I'm aware of. No. Wait. That's it. Still coming. All right. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, chief. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have one final uh, item under my report for the board's consideration. Uh, in your packet is, is included uh, the request for a purchase of a street sweeper from the American Rescue Fund. Uh, it was <clears throat> budgeted for $260,000. Uh, the, unfortunately, the price came back a little bit higher. Uh, the Public Works Director has put together a, mem a memorandum. This piece of equipment not only street s sweeps the streets, but is also required as part of our MS4 approvals with DEP. 
Appropriate motion would be authorization to purchase a street sweeper from the American Rescue Fund in the amount of $292,882.75 through CoStars. Okay, do we have that motion? So moved. Uh, I'll, and I'll, I'll second it. Um, have a motion and a second. Do we have any comments from the board? I think I've, as I said at our last meeting, that uh, I'm not in favor of this purchase at this time. Um, I wish we could, you know, finance half of it or find another way to not use up this big chunk of our American Rescue Funds. Uh, I feel there's, it's, some of it is needed in other places. And I would just, um Reiterate that it's the, the MS4 is important to address as well. Um, could be that once we get a new machine that, that actually works all the time uh, and doesn't need repair, that many repairs, that we could uh, loan it out and maybe uh, uh, get, get a little bit of uh, money back for, for it that way. Um, so just a couple of thoughts that... You know, I've been keeping it back in my mind. Plus, there's the possibility of getting uh, $20,000 or so, as, as if I'm remembering the, the manager's uh, number uh, from uh, a, a um, sale of the, of the current street sweeper. So those are the reasons why I'm willing to vote for it. Yes, you may. The MS-4 certainly needs to co be complied with. There are other ways to comply with the MS-4 as well that require a lot less money, and I'd like to see the township address some of them as well, which are uh, much cheaper. Uh, okay. Sounds good. That's all I've got. Sounds good. In, in regards to uh, this fulfilling an MS-4 uh, uh, qualification, are there any grants available for such a such a purchase? Not that I'm aware of off the top of my head. Is, isn't that what the rescue plan is? I, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the huge, the huge <laughs> grant, but I was just wondering if there's an additional grant because of the uh, MS4 qualification. No, that, that is a largely unfunded mandate imposed by DEP in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. How old is our current uh, sweeper? It's a 2003. Okay. So, so what, what, what would the approximate life time of this new one be? Well, approximately. I mean, it's had the, the one we had for 20 years, so 20 hopefully years. 20, okay, 20 years. So it's another 20 years of which... Uh, they probably don't make them like they used to. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it. And uh, I'm sure our uh, finance department can depreciate it as time goes on, so it, it, it does become some sort of an asset to us. Um, but this is also... Uh, it's also instrumental. Uh, luckily, this winter time we haven't had snow, but I know in the past, uh, boy, when they throw that rock salt down, it accumulates in all the neighborhoods, and this is one of the uh, the best ways to eliminate that. And we wouldn't want anybody coming to us saying that their neighborhood is full of rock salt, and we weren't co we weren't uh, complying with the cleanup. So um, I, I think, given that it's a possible 20-year vehicle only used uh, every once in a while in regards to seasonal, fulfilling the uh, uh, requirement of, of the environmental issue. Uh, I have no problem. I have no problem with this. Any other board comments? Any from the public? Please state your name, so. Hi, John DeApril, New Town Grant. Biggest and the best. Uh, I agree with the manager who should buy that sweeper. Um, there's one thing that the residents see when a sweeper's around. It makes enough, uh, uh, you know, motor sound and everything, and the residents get to see it. I know in New Town Grant, uh, they come around once a year. Uh, we'd like to see it more than once a year, but, uh, you know, the board has talked about it and everything, but... Uh, you know, with the uh, you know constraints and the, the work 
the uh, manpower and all that stuff. But I'd like to see them buy the sweeper. Thank you. Thank you. All right, seeing no other public comment, I'll call the question. Those in favor of there was a motion. Mr. Calabro made the motion. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And I second. And I believe Mr. Calabro. Mm -hmm. It's so cold in here, my <laughs> Very good. Uh, so I'll call, go ahead and call the question. Those in favor of purchasing the, I don't know, I'm going to get it exactly the way Mr. Lewis said it, of purchasing the street sweeper from CoStars for the, in the amount of $292,882.75, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Motion carries 3-1. That's all I have under my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Ms. Snyder, would you like to do the minutes, bills, and sure. reports? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of our February 22nd meeting. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Uh, any questions from the board, from the public? All the, let me call the question. Those in favor of accepting the minutes of February 22nd, 2023, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. I'd like to make a motion to pay our bills in the amount of $435,865.07. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have a comment from the, any other comments from the board, from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of paying our bills as found in the March 8th bills list say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 3-1. Finally, I'd like to make a motion to approve the total of interfund transfers in the amount of $331,334.86. I have a motion and a second. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from the board on this? From the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of... Uh, Paying our interfund transfers as listed on the May March eighth bills list, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four zero. And that brings us to our second round of public comment. Please come forward and podium and state your name and your community and Hello, everybody. Uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, Newtown Grant, resident since 1999. And um, I was uh, at the uh, uh, special zoning board hearing uh, a couple days ago, and I wanted to give uh, Mr. Sanders a good round of applause for all of his work he did to go against some of the uh, 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 Wawa's uh, witnesses that they had. So he did a really good job. But one of the things that um, they brought up during that is some of the uh, zoning laws are kind of like outdated from like years past. I'm not talking like five years, but like 20, 30 years. And I think that's something that um, should be updated because every year new regulations, policies come out for different um, industries, you know, for traffic studies, for um, engineering, for signage or whatever. And I think that's something that, you know, the township should look into trying to fix, maybe have like a committee or a board that looks into that and changes it every year because if something comes up like a Wawa or um, another complex building that people don't want and the township wants to go against it, it makes it very difficult where if they take it to court, they could fight and say, oh, this is outdated from 30 years ago. It doesn't comply with the new traffic laws um, that the industry has and stuff. So I think that's something that we need to look into. To. And also the comprehensive plan, most people aren't going to see it, but most people that talk on online and stuff um, don't want to see overdevelopment and see big complexes and big uh, buildings and stuff because traffic's already horrendous. Just look at the Village Shopping Center where we added so much in there now that it's horrendous. You can't park anywhere. People got to park.
park, you know, almost a mile away to walk over there. Um, I know land is uh, very hard to come by or whatever, and, you know, sometimes you've got to squeeze things together, but people just want to see kind of what we have now, stay as close to what we have now, because we know with anybody, it doesn't matter what business you have, doesn't matter what um, company you have, if they have a lot of money, they'll find a way to put it somewhere, even if it's not technically supposed to be uh, built on because they call wetlands or, oh, because this and that's there, they'll find a way to spend enough money to fix it to make it how they want to. So I just hope that um, you guys will look into some of that and try to fix that so we don't have stuff like Wawa if we don't want it, let's say, some of us, that there's an easier way to say no than just being like, oh, well, it's kind of stuck because we're not up to compliance with what the state or the laws are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. John DeAprile again, Newtown Grant. Uh, I also was at the uh, zoning uh, meeting. Uh, I always was talking about the signs. Uh, one thing, though, uh, you got to remember the uh, attorneys who were there for one reason, they're getting paid. Um, one of the um, experts that uh, uh, Provco had brought up uh, said that the uh, uh, zoning law on a sign was ambiguous. And uh, being a layman, not a lawyer, not a, a traffic expert or whatever, it is ambiguous because there's so many things on there that contradict itself. Uh, the main thing is LED lighting. You guys on this board here has talked about LED, LED lighting for, for your uh, uh, street lights. Uh, LED, LED lighting is the thing of the future. That's where zoning has to catch up. Uh, everybody wants LED. It's in the uh, Planning Commission plan, look into LED lighting and, and uh, uh, you know. So the guy that said ambiguous and the other, and, uh, the other expert that uh, yeah, he, he uh, uh, cut up the zoning. The zoning thing is ambiguous. And like I said, the lawyers will fight for hours and hours because they're on the clock, they're getting paid. Thank you. Any other public comment for this evening? All right. Any old business? I do have some old business. Okay. Uh, more, it's more of a, a request for Mr. Lewis. Uh, last week we had um, Mr. McGuigan ask some questions, and I believe we're passing them on to our engineer. And I understand we're not going to have those answers quickly, so I just wanted to make the request that we get that, those answers to the board for the next, the next meeting. Uh, also, uh, regarding email exchange that went around about um, Sunday work hours over at Arcadia slash Mayfair, is that something we can regulate? Because I do get contacted a lot about noise complaints over there. Like, what is the limit of our regulation of, of the weekend scheduling? So the way the, the ordinance is written currently, they're permitted to work on Saturdays. We're trying to uh, mitigate that. Um, as far as Sundays go, they're not allowed to work on Sunday. Okay. okay. So if, if there's any issues on Sunday, uh, residents are urged to call the uh, police department. Okay. And we'll deal with it on our end on Monday morning. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thanks. And <clears throat> I, I suggested to the, the manager that if Saturdays are going to be an option, to have them start later in the morning so people could get a good night's sleep. So the complaints that I've received were morning related. But. Any other old business? I, I have a, just a very brief comment. I, I have gotten um, requests for appointments from f f six up to six people on the e Economic Development Committee. So we may be able to put that committee together. I'm, I've sent an email to... Uh, Mr. Peters, who was the former chairperson of the uh, Economic Development Committee, uh, to see if he wanted to help me contact some people and, and get their all their information. And uh, I think I'm, I think I'm. Oh, I, I think the, I think folks, there's there's two folks that need to submit a letter of letter of interest in writing. They've talked about it. it talked about it verbally, but they didn't give it to us in writing, as well as it, they haven't given a resume yet. So we're going to 
Mr. Peters and I will work together to get that done and maybe have a paper presentation to the board for the next meeting. Any other old business? Any new business? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. I, I have a, yes. uh, a request of the manager and or if the manager can uh, pass this on to whoever is the pro appropriate party. Um, over in the uh, promenade area where um, La Stala Italian Market sits, there is a um, fire hydrant that's been covered uh, for well, maybe six months now, which is indicating that it's out of commission. And I think it's the only fire hydrant within the promenade parking lot, so it uh, does, uh, does pose some sort of a danger you know, if something were to happen there. I just wonder if the appropriate parties could be contacted to either repair that fire hydrant or just to make sure that fire hydrant is in, uh, can be properly used so that it, uh, that area is protected. Uh, God forbid something were to happen there. Yes, I can pass that on along to the uh, <coughs> Water Authority. Thank you. <coughs> That's all I have. Great. Thank you. Any other business this evening? Seeing none, uh, if there's without objection, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.